Welcome. Welcome to worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this second Sunday of Advent, the Love Sunday. Please join us for worship in Jesus' name. We will begin our worship by lighting of the Advent candle. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. Please join us in the first two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. You pray with us, please. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading will be from the New Revised Standard Version. From the Old Testament, I will be reading Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, or comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley, valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I'll say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God, of our God, will stand forever. Get you up to the high mountains, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear, say to the cities of Judah. Here's your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Next scripture reading will be from Psalm 85. Lord, you are favorable to your land. You must restore the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God, for our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him with their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. The next reading is from the New Testament, 2 Peter, verse 3, excuse me, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is, but is patient with you not warning any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire in the earth, and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of, the God, of God, because which the heavens will set ablaze and dissolve, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for the new heavens and a new earth, with righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, 
See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Thanks be to God. Mark starts his gospel off right to the punchline giving us the good news of Jesus Christ and claiming Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Anointed One, the long-awaited One. In the beginning of the good news, the proclamation of who Jesus Christ is, the revelation of who God is for the world. Mark also goes to Isaiah and changes some of the wording, but the part of Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Could be talking about John the baptizer who is introduced next, but it also could be talking about Jesus making the way straight for God to be revealed to the world. The good news, the gospel, of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is at the beginning of Mark's gospel. In the perfect place for the people who were hearing the gospel being read to pay attention, to look forward to what was coming next from the speaker who was reading the letter. They heard about John the baptizer who appeared in the wilderness and the audience would have known that this could be a reference to the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for those 40 years during the Exodus where Moses was leading them. And you remember the story of the people in the wilderness and the things that took place, the calamities, the disasters, the pulling away from the one true God and the coming back to, to, to the one true God, to the miracles God had shown them, the miraculous things that happened to them, being fed from manna that God provided and quail that God provided, even parting the Red Sea so they could escape. God did all of this for the people of Israel. And John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. John the baptizer proclaimed that baptism for all who would listen and all, it tells us, came. The people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem. Do you see this? This geographical journey mimics the geographical journey of Jesus, the Christ, on his way to Jerusalem. There is so much richness in this few verses of Mark. The people were going out to be baptized, to be forgiven, to be purified, and they were flocking to John. And then it tells us about John and how he was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, like Elijah, giving the impression of the prophets, 
giving the impressions of the prophet being fulfilled. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I am co is coming after me. And John humbled himself and said he was not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. Another impression of what Jesus did for his disciples when he stooped down, he humbled himself and washed their feet at the Last Supper. We have these beautiful images of the Gospels here in the beginning of Mark's Gospel. Then John says, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. What a glorious gift. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit being offered to the creation of God. The creatures that God created offers God's self to all God created. Here in this beautiful imagery of Jesus baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. By water and the Spirit, we, the church, have been baptized into the family of God, the beloved community. And right now it feels like we're wandering around in a wilderness of pandemic and uncertain times. But we have the power that raised Jesus from the dead, abiding in our hearts. All who claim the name of Jesus Christ as Lord has the Holy Spirit living and abiding in us in such a way that will teach us all that we need to know, to give us the faith so to believe that even in this wilderness that we find ourselves in, to know and believe that God truly is in control, that God truly wins. And as we are waiting during this second Sunday of Advent, during this season of Advent, know that the love of God is pure and perfect and given freely to all God created. As we wait for our world to return to normal, whatever that may look like for you, please wait for the return of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Come, Lord Jesus, that ancient prayer. I challenge each of us to continue to pray that ancient prayer daily. Come, Lord Jesus. It's so simple. Throughout your day, pray the prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. And prepare the way in your heart to receive Jesus daily. Expect that prayer to be answered. There is a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, the wilderness of our world, and that voice still is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Prepare in your hearts the way of the Lord. Make it easy for Christ to enter into your daily life by making his path straight and herald the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to the world around you during this Advent season. And prayerfully, we'll be able to be together to celebrate Christmas, the birth, as we remember the birth of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Come, Lord Jesus, help us to prepare the way for you to enter in to our world every day. Hallelujah. Amen.
Please join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession. It is proper and right for us to confess our sins before God. For the forgiveness of our sins, repent and forgiveness is the message for this day. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the provision that you give to us each and every day. We thank you, God, that we can come to you and repent and receive your forgiveness. We thank you, God, that as we are gathered online this Sunday, that your love is present, that we can worship you no matter where we are. We thank you, God, for the gifts that are given for the ministry of your church. We thank you, God, mostly for the Holy Spirit abiding in our hearts. We thank you, God, for Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the glory, forever. Amen.
receive this blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace into your day to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving your neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen.